Welcome to this tutorial brought to you by To The Tick, and today's topic is the Bear Pennant. Technical analysis and trader experience have put pennants as a price pattern at the top of the favorites list in a group known as trend continuation. For traders, this means we get to watch the pennant pattern unfold, then have an opportunity to capitalize after we've seen it. Now, this image represents a bear pennant price pattern. It's important to note that a price pattern in this case has two parts. Part one is the actual pole and part two is the pennant attached to a pole. Now the pole itself establishes trend direction. You'll notice in this case the base is at the top, the tip is pointed down, down lower, and that gives it a bearish direction. The pennant itself has no direction. It would be considered neutral unless it's attached to that pole. Therefore, to be a bear pennant price pattern, you're looking for a two-part pattern and it must have a pole. Without the pole, you do not have a pennant price pattern. So before we get into the details about how to trade it, who needs to learn them and why? Well, basically everybody, because you're going to see plenty of pennants. They quite often are that first impulsive move after new breakdowns. You're going to see them in lots of markets, time frames, price ranges. So who doesn't need to learn them? So let's get into understanding their characteristics and finding out how we might benefit from being able to trade. First, we're going to focus entirely on a bearish pennant where it might lead into that continuation of trend and we have to establish a reference point. So the bears are smashing, smashing, smashing here into a big base of support that the bulls have held for a while. They've worked on it, worked on it, worked on it, and that's the first thing they have to do. They must get through that line and then manage to prove that they can hold it as a new breakdown and we will watch the formation of part one of our price pattern, which is the pole. You are watching the formation of the pole. So we now have a base to the pole. We have the pole extension action out of that pole, and then we have a pole tip, which also correlates with the swing low here in price. You'll notice that the pole is not straight up and down, but it is tilted, always will be towards price. We get our first bar or two down here that establishes a swing up effort and then a swing down effort where we've confirmed that the support down here has stopped the decline and we've managed to get a second swing up. So now we actually have enough components to the pattern to start working on part two. Part two means we, we have those swing lows, swing highs, and now we can draw some, uh, some trend lines that represent our immediate definition of resistance across the top and support across the bottom. Now we're going to bring our image back into the picture again and you'll notice first of all the pole is not straight up and down, it is tilted towards price. You'll also notice that there are the base and the pole tip all in place and we are finished with that part of the process. So let's focus on part two. In a bearish continuation pattern, we're looking for this period to be a consolidation, a pause in the action. And the first thing I want you to notice is that the image that we had as our ideal little pin it does not match what we've now drawn as our support and resistance levels based on the highs and lows that we had to connect those dots. Well, it doesn't matter. It's about the structure. Our little pennant that we started with may be exactly what you get. It's kind of short and stubby and looks like a right symmetrical triangle, and you may get one, two swings, and then they move on with it. Wouldn't that be nice? Okay, that's a possibility. Another possibility is it takes a little bit longer. We still want this to be a pause and relatively brief, but we do want to see a pause and be patient and let them develop and stay inside that range bound structure that we have with our support and resistance efforts. And you'll notice as we keep kind of building in this, as long as they keep keeping that structure, everything is fine, however long it takes. You'll notice that the prices based on the structure itself, whether it's our little bitty pennant or the one that we have that's called 
open-ended, they're squeezing prices between them. That means they are converging. That's what we call this. The lines are converging towards each other, pushing and squeezing that price, bulls and bears, coming to a point in the middle, right? In the middle. And that middle is called the apex. It's the area where those lines are converging. Converging simply means the lines are inclining towards each other. And that's exactly what we have. So as long as the price pattern maintains this structure, you're getting what you want, however long it takes. Again, the point is we're looking for the trend continuation based on the pole. So any advantage we might get, whether it's the midline advantage or it's the support line advantage, we can trade those with those advantages based on the picture. Again, traders' choice on different approaches as to how aggressive to be looking for your short entries. So what we're looking for now is how can the pattern actually help us with what might come next? Well, the price patterns in general are really nice about that and the pennant is no different. We're looking for a continuation pattern and what we're going to do is we're going to take the entire measurement of our first move. We want to repeat that thrusting strong surge action in volume and price that we got out of the bears in the first place. We're going to take that same move, measure that move, and add it looking for a whole new leg to this continuation pattern. Now you are welcome to either add it to the apex price, which again is that midline where those bulls and bears are fighting over that muddy trench, or you can take it from your breakdown line. Again, you don't know exactly where that is yet, so you're looking for a target to come lower with that momentum. And we're looking for that surge again in volume and price with the bears taken over. We want to see once they get that breakdown that they are able to hold it, retraces back into the picture are common. First target is take out that first swing low in price that produced the tip of our pole. Take out that target, then show us that you're going to confirm. Often this will bounce back up into the picture. Again, trader's choice about where to take entries and how much confirmation to use. But this is the expectation is we're looking for the duplication of that first impulsive thrusting move to repeat the entire pattern. In summation, we need to understand that in a bearish pennant, the most important characteristic is the pole. The identification of that breakdown and a big surge and that impulsive move out of the bears, you want to see it stronger and deeper, the better. The bigger the volume, the bigger the spread in price, the better for the possibility of your continuation of trend. Everything about the pattern after that is all still going to be based on the pole. So again, our our pause section should be brief. We want very little in the way of too much price action back on our breakdown. We want to see this maybe two or three swings. And I can't stress enough, the pennant usually is very short and stubby and squatty looking. When it goes on for too long, it's really more like a, a, a triangle, which we have a pattern for too, but the pennant's usually brief. We want to make sure that it maintains that converging support and resistance structure is really what we're looking for while it stays inside there. Now the apex and the breakdown both, either or, we're looking for a push in volume and price that basically says the bears have pushed through that midline, we're not getting back above there anymore, and that apex is that middle, and we're looking to add an entire move that happened the first time to one of these values and see if we can get another leg out of the pattern. And with that, you're welcome to either use that apex or the breakdown number. You want to take that number and subtract the value of your original poll, and then you will have your measured move target. On our website, I try to offer the videos and then I put text there for you to be able to have something written to review. And inside that text, I will always <clears throat> try to offer you at least an example or two, maybe more, of some of these price patterns. And in there, I will usually try to offer you some more uh, conservative, if you will, some ways to, that you could also trade this. And I try to give you a picture of what I see both in sellers and buyers in the way of volume and try to coordinate it for 
for you a little bit. So again, it's on our website. Come and look at these examples. I think you'll see that they're pretty nice. And I want to encourage you because we have lots of great educational material on the site. And it's, again, to the tick.com at edu. Please come and subscribe. And today's tutorial is now over. And it's been on the bearish pennant. Thank you very much.